Hi, this is Patrick Ray. I'm here today to talk to you about ways to transfer money. This is not going to be a comprehensive video on how to transfer money. I'm going to cover the big three that I use on a regular basis, but I'm not going to cover everything. I just want to clarify, this is going to be related to moving money domestically. I'm not going to cover international payments in this video. This is domestic only. Before we dive into the big three, let's just go over a couple basics. One, the payor, this is the person that is sending money. The payee, this is the person receiving money. Routing number, this is going to be a number that is associated with a specific bank. Bank account number, this is going to be your personal bank account number or a institution's bank account number. For further credit, you'll only see this with wires but this is going to be specific to your bank account that's also associated with an institution's bank account you'll see a for further credit ffc on a lot of like asset management companies or anyone that manages money okay what is a check a check is a piece of paper that is a negotiable instrument that indicates to a bank how to transfer money from a payor to a payee. So what are the pros and cons of checks? A pro, it's very easy. Uh, and you don't need a, you can have a basic checking account to have access to checks. Two, your payee doesn't necessarily need a bank account. They can go to a check cashing place or endorse it to someone else to get money for that particular check. The cons of writing a check. It can be extremely slow. If you write a check and send it through the mail, you gotta hope it gets there. And then you have the second problem is uncashed checks. Checks you've written, mailed out, that have never been cashed or just completely have been lost. So you have uncashed checks, which leads to either one, stop payment, which is gonna cost you additional money, or two, you run into a situation where you might have to escheat it to the state. Escheatment means you have a check out there that you've paid somebody for services or goods and they haven't cashed it, you've tried to reissue it, and they're just not cashing it. In that instance, you send it over to the state and then they can claim it as unclaimed property. Another con with checks is you're bringing ink and paper into the equation. It's not paperless. You're still using a piece of paper, using ink from a printer, using ink from a pen. It is not paperless. Now the cost of writing a check can be a pro and also can be a con. Pro, if you are an individual and you have a free checking account and you write a check, that's convenient, that's easy, and that's cheap. On the flip side, if you're a corporation and you have a internal controls, you have a accounting system, you have people processing those payments, it can get fairly expensive quick. I've seen studies where the, the, they say the cost of writing a check is between four to even twenty dollars depending on what you include. I did, a, I did a simple calculation at my current job and calculated it cost about a dollar nineteen in direct expenses excluding staff to cut a check between printer paper, ink, envelope, postage, dollar nineteen. Okay, number two on the list is ACH, Automated Clearing House Transactions. These are electronic payments, also known as EFTs, Electronic Funds Transfer. These are electronic payments that you have made as the payor to the payee. There is no ink and paper involved in this transaction. You're using your bank account. You need the routing number. You need the account number of the payee. You're going onto your bank account and you're electronically sending the payee money. This you can think about this as Zelle. You can Zelle or Zelly, I don't know. Zelly? You tell me. So what are the pros and cons of ACH? Pro, it's cheap. Uh, anywhere from 10 cents to 50 cents uh, is what I've seen. I'm sure there's some that are cheaper. I'm sure there's ones that are more expensive. That 10 cents to 50 cents seems to be about right for a ACH transaction. It is convenient. 
the payor is sending it from their bank account to the payee's bank account. No mail involved. It goes straight into the payee's bank account within one to three days. Uh, typically, one to two days is my experience, but it can, depending on the payee's bank, maybe three days. Also, there is some recourse if you send an ACH in air. Now, it's got to be timely. You've got to recognize it right away. If you send an ACH and within an hour you realize, oh, I sent the wrong amount or I sent the wrong banking instructions, you can call your bank or reach out to your bank and get that ACH transaction reversed. What are the cons of ACH? Not too many, but a couple to consider. One, free checking accounts, basic checking accounts, aren't gonna have the sophistication or level of, of complexity that you might need for an ACH transaction. They may have Zelle, Zelle, whatever you wanna call that, or Venmo, or some sort of application where you can kinda of get by using the free system, but it's not as sophisticated or as, as, as useful as a robust banking account. Second, the payee absolutely needs a bank account. If they don't have a bank account, you cannot send them an ACH. You cannot send them Zelle. You cannot send them Venmo. The payee in this instance has to have a bank account. All right, next on our list, wires. Wires are also electronic transfers, but get there extremely quick within the day. My experience is usually it's there within the hour. Once you send a wire, it's gone. It's a, it has left your bank account and it is making its way very quickly to the other person's bank. The big pro of a wire is it's fast. It gets there quickly. Also, the payee receives it directly into their bank account. What are the cons of a wire? It's expensive and be anywhere from ten to fifty dollars could be more depending on your bank they are the most expensive way to send a payment so in other words you do not want to pay all your bills via wire because it's going to cost you a fortune this is another instance that you're going to need a more robust bank account a lot of free checking accounts are not going to have wire capabilities you're going to if you need to send a wire with a free account typically, typically you're going to have to call your bank and have them help you with that you need a more robust banking uh, account to send wires. The second con of wires is there's very little recourse. Once you hit send and that wire is gone. I've never been successful in stopping a wire after it's been sent. So you gotta be really careful when you send a wire because once it's gone, it's gone. And if it goes into a, an account that you did not want to, you need to reach out to that person and hope they're going to send that money back to you. Third, the payee also in this instance needs a bank account that accepts wires. So anyone that doesn't have a bank account, you cannot send them a wire. So for a check, you're gonna need a couple key pieces of information to actually cut a check. You're gonna need the person's name, the payee's name. You're probably gonna need their address. That's about it. You got the amount, you got the payee's name, you got the address, fill that in, send it out. That's all you need for a check. ACH, you need a couple different pieces of information. You need the routing number, you need the bank account number, you need the person's name, and that's it. Uh, that, that, that should be sufficient to send them an ACH. When sending a wire, you're going to get need to gather a lot more information than an ACH or a check. You're gonna need the person's name or entity's name. You're gonna need the entity or person's address. You're gonna need the routing number. You're gonna need to validate that the routing number is for wires or can accept wires. For example, Bank of America has a routing number for ACHs and a different number for wires. Then the account number. You wanna validate that is that the final layer is it going to hit that person's bank account or is that an institution's bank account and I need to ask for the for further credit number. All right, that's the big three. Check, ACH, wire, some pros and cons to each. Um, not every circumstance fits the mold for each, each one of those. So you gotta look at it and see what makes the most sense. And if uh, you got something out of this, give me a thumbs up. If you like topics like this, please subscribe. Um, thank you for making it to the bitter end. Have a great rest of your day. Take care, bye.